it is an honor and a God-given privilege to be here this evening again, once again, to complete according to the Father, real love, the love of the Father, part of the series of real love tonight. Um, I just would uh, ask everyone tonight, right now, before we enter into the messages at all, for us to give honor, glory, and praise to the one who is making this all possible this evening, and that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who came here, died on the cross. Because of his death, we all have life. Because of his death, we all can cry out, Abba, Father. Because of his death, we are all breathing, living, and able to proclaim ourselves as Christians. Amen. So would you bow your heads with me, please? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, we pray to you as Jesus instructed us, our Father in heaven. And we want to thank you for giving us life this evening. Thank you for giving us breath. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to be on the show and even listening to the show tonight. Lord God, we thank you for the forgiveness of our sins. Forgive us on this Sabbath day, this Sabbath Sunday, if we have sinned, committed any sin against you, because it's against you and you only do we trespass, Lord. So, Lord, we ask that you'll forgive us of our sins, where we are fallen short, O oh God, where, Lord, the things that we have said didn't glorify you, didn't uplift, didn't exalt you. Lord God, the things we looked at or listened to, or even though we had been to church, O oh God, our heart may have been very far from you. But here we are, O oh God, because of your grace, because of your mercy this evening, we ask that you would wash us in the blood of your son, Jesus, his holy, precious blood. Make us clean, Lord, this evening. Make us emptied out, that you will fill us up. We thank you for the meat that you fed us yesterday. But, Lord, we are hungry today for more. Lord Jesus, tonight we want to truly taste of your body and drink of your blood. That indeed, we shall say, it was good. We have seen, Lord. So, Father, we ask that your presence will saturate the atmosphere. Your presence will rest upon this radio show, upon our uh, dear sister Diana and brother Chuck and on myself and all the listeners that are out there, Lord, that we will feel the touch of the Master, the touch of your presence, the touch of your Holy Spirit. Lord God, that our hearts will be joined as one. Tonight, Lord, we gather in the upper room. Yes, Lord God, we gather tonight in your upper room to wait on your visitation, because tonight it's a holy visitation. Tonight, the outpouring of your Holy Spirit as it was on the day of Pentecost. Lord God, we wait patiently, O oh God. Lord Jesus, even as Samuel waited, for you to call his name again, that this time, Lord, he would answer to say, Here, I'm, here I am, Lord, thy humble servant heareth. Here we are tonight, Lord. Your humble servants heareth. So speak to us, Lord, that only you can. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and in the name of God our Father, Son, 
in his Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Tonight, before we continue, I would like to do a brief recap for those that have missed yesterday and to bring us back up in one accord of what happened. Yesterday, we spoke of the uh, beginning of part one of We Love the Love of the Father. We're going to complete tonight our Lord's willing. Yesterday, we looked at love, that wonderful word that has the ability, the power to stir us up, the power to heal, to set hearts on fire, to soothe, and even to stir to obedience. We came to understand what love is defined as here. Um, In our world, it's an intense feeling of deep affection, but we came to understand that it's even more than that. Amen. We we, um, are reminded that there are seven types of love, according to the Greeks. First is the eros, which is the love of the body, named after the Greek god of love and sexual desire. He's the one that goes about shooting golden arrows into the hearts of everyone who brings to mind right now uh, the Roman counterpart, which we all know about, is Cupid, which I'm sorry to say many of us Christians celebrate that pagan day of Valentine's Day, going around shooting Cupid's arrows. Uh, But tonight, uh, eyes are opened, ears are opened, and we come to understand what it is that we're doing. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We looked to Eros as the Greeks, um, how they fear that love. The Greeks say that it was the most dangerous kind of love to have because it could get them into the most trouble. And we see that even with um, many men and women bound by pornography, um, looking at nude sexual pictures, that same erotic love has led to even pedophilia, the, um, wanting to have uh, sexual relations with children. It has even led to incest, sexual relations with family members. That is such a dangerous kind of love. Amen. Then we looked also at philia, which is the love of the mind, also known as brotherly love, the love that we share amongst a group of people who are uh, who have common values, um, common thoughts, common way of thinking. Just as us Christians, we share the same God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We follow the word of God according to the Holy Word, the Holy Bible, um, with the laws, the precepts, and the concepts that are laid out there. Um, so that's philia. Then we look at ludus. That's called that playful, flirtatious kind of love. People think it's healthy to flirt, but we know Ludus leads also to Eros, that erotic kind of love, that love that uh, gets us into so much trouble and binds us in darkness. Amen? Then we also looked at Philautia. That's the love of self. And we saw that there were two kinds of the love of self. There's the selfish one, which is self-pleasing for pleasure or fame or wealth. And that kind of love, selfish love, leads to narcissism, which is a controlling kind of love. Control the thoughts, the actions, um, even the mood of someone is very manipulative, controlling. And we know who sits over the narcissistic. That's the spirit of Jezebel. Amen? Uh, Everyone around her is her eunuch who is there just to please her. But there's also the healthy kind of love. That's the love of self. The love that we um, are need for any relationship. It's that love that causes us to be able to love others because first we must love ourselves. And that's philautia. Then we have the pragma love. That is the long-standing love, the love that exists, the everlasting love that exists between married couples, which develops over a long period of time. I wish I had known that. Hmm. 
um, and I'm sure many of us have probably seen, we wish we knew that when we were married, because it says develops over a long period of time, and not running off saying marriage is not working and running the other way. And pragma is also the kind of love which is known as the standing in love rather than the falling in love because out of it comes that profound understanding hallelujah of commitment um, compromise and tolerance pragma is considered the highest form of love because of its purity and its truth in uh, in the commitment into the relationship then we also looked at the agape love which is a love that's selfless it's a, a love that looks beyond the person but to the soul giving the unconditional love giving without the expectation of anything in return it is a compassionate love that allows us to sympathize with others and to help people that we don't even know that's the godly love the love that our Father has for us and the love that is expected from us. Amen? Then we also looked at the storge love, which is the parental love for the child. This is supposed to be a love that flows naturally from parent to children, um, supposed to be effortless, but we know because of sin, many of us lack that storge love parent for child um, and it we lack that storge love for child, for the parent it is the love that knows forgiveness it's the a, it's a love that uh, sacrifices causes the parent to sacrifice it's a kind of love that you feel secure, comfortable and safe in that is storge Amen we looked at where um, to understand the Father, we went to the book of Genesis when he made man in his own image, where he gave us his identity according to Genesis 1, 26, 29 and Genesis 2, 7, where he formed man out of the dust, breathed himself, his breath of life into us and man became living soul. We know that his DNA is in us, that his blood flows through us. We came to understand that God gave us power and authority, power over the marine realm, over the sea, power over the spiritual realm, over the air, power over the earth realm, over the land, according to Genesis 1, 26, where he gave us dominion. Amen. We also see God as the Father, where he blessed us and gave us a legacy and inheritance, where he says for us to be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it, according to Genesis 1.28 and Genesis 2.15, where God took us and put us in the Garden of Eden to dress and to keep it. That was our job. Amen. Then we also came to understand also the role of the Father, which was to feed us, nourish us, give us something to eat. And we see that in Genesis 1.29, where he gave us the herb bearing seed and every tree, every fruit yielding tree to be meat for us. Then we also saw God the Father giving us a home. According to Genesis 2.8, where the Lord God planted us, um, planted the Garden of Eden and put us there in the Garden of Eden. Eden representing the place of delight, God's paradise for man. Then we see also where God took that house that he had placed in Eden and dressed it and made it into the home. Amen. It says that he put in there every tree that was pleasant to the sight and good for food. There in the garden was a tree of life in the middle of the garden. And there was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And there was a river that flowed out of Eden, a river that parted into four heads. First one was the Pison, um, where in the land of the Pison there was gold. And the Lord said that the gold of that land was good. Then we had the Gihon River, 
Amen, and then the Hidako in the Euphrates, and we um, address the meaning and the interpretation with the Pison, also known as the Pishon, was the mouth, Hidako or Hadiko was the rapid, and the Gion, the bubbler bursting forth, and the Euphrates, also known as the good Parat, Amen, which was the fruitfulness. So we know, um, as the Lord revealed to us, that Hallelujah. That man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, which produces the rapid, being in the Holy Spirit, bubbling out of us, giving us that new tongue, and we begin to produce the fruits of the Holy Spirit, according to Galatians 5.22, love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, long-suffering, faith, meekness, and temperance, uh, which brings us to grow as a, as according to the tree of righteousness planted by the river of water, according to Psalms 1 verse 3, that bringeth forth his fruit in season, leaf not withering, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Amen. We also looked at the angels wondering, why God? You made them to be less. What is the significance? Of it, we saw even Satan himself testing the love of God, the love of the Father for his children. We see him visiting Job. Job lost all his wealth, and his health was attacked. Satan still doesn't understand what he began in the garden to separate the love of the Father from the child. To this day, now. That war still rages on. Not understanding the meaning of John 3.16, that God could love us so much to give of himself, to take the form of flesh, to come to this earth, to die on the cross, to draw us, to reconcile, to win us, to purchase us back to him. We understood the value that God placed on us more than himself. Just like a parent that sacrifices, giving the child the last meal, going hungry for days, child not even knowing, but that's the word they sacrifice. Or the parent that's out there cleaning a house, scrubbing toilets so the child could go to school, making whatever necessary sacrifice. Through all of this, we understood also from the Father that we needed the love of the brother to have the love of the Father. That was according to John 15, 9 and 10, that as the Father loved us, loved him, so did the brother love us. And because he, Jesus, is loved by the Father, he, in obedience of the love of the Father, laid down his life. That's in John 10, 17 and 18, willingly laying down. That's the same thing that we do as Christians. Willingly lay down ourselves because of his love. Because Christ loved us, we go into the jungles of Borneo, we go into the Amazons, we go in the midst of war to bring the message of love, to bring the message of the good news of the kingdom, to show them the way, the truth, and the life, to reconcile all those that are lost back to Jesus. Amen. And so, we continue tonight. Real love. The love of the Father. We will take a quick break. Amen. And when we return, we will speak about our brother, Jesus Christ. Our elder brother, the firstborn 
Son of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Welcome back to the completion of real love, the love of the Father. Hallelujah. So we continue on tonight. We begin first with Christ, our brother. And I welcome everyone to please turn with me to the book of 1 John 3, 1 to 2. And I will be reading from the King James Version tonight. And it reads, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. This is John the Beloved speaking about the love of God, trying to express to us the manner of it. It says we know not, we're not able to understand it, neither can the world, but it is there for us because we are the sons of God. It says sons. We know in the beginning it speaks about Jesus, the son of God. So if we are sons of God, then that makes Jesus Christ our brother. And as we found out yesterday, we needed the love of the brother in order to have the love of the father. And the father knew this because in John 3.16 it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, my brothers and sisters, in order to receive the love of the Father, we must first believe in Jesus, who he is, his purpose on the earth, which was to be born, to die, that we might live. Jesus fulfilled the commandment to come here on the earth so that we would become sons of God. And he rose on the third day to give us life. Hallelujah. How marvelous. How marvelous. Knowing, hallelujah, who our brother Jesus Christ is. So when we pray, and we say, in the name of Jesus, it is not someone distant, but it's a family. We have the authority of the Father, and we have the authority of the Son, because Jesus says, all that my Father has, has he given to me. And what did Jesus say in Luke ten nineteen? All power that was given to me. Do I give unto you? And you have power over the power of the enemy. So look at our family tree. Just take a quick look at our family tree. We have God the Father. Then we have God the Son. Amen. Then we have the Holy Spirit amongst us, in us. Because we fall down the line. We are the next rung of that family tree. Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, He is what I would call the encompass that wraps us in because He indwells in us. So we are lifted up into the arms of Jesus where we indwell in Christ because the Holy Spirit of God indwells in us. And as Christ indwells in the Father, so do we indwell in Christ as he indwells in the Father. I know this sounds kind of, um, you know, just like far-fetched, but just imagine the egg 
you have the shell and you have the white albumin and then you have the yolk but it's one egg we all are one in Christ so turn with me quickly to John chapter 14 same beloved John and we're going to read from verse 21 to 24 and it reads he that hath my commandments and keepeth them he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him then, G- then Judah says unto him not Iscariot Lord how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world Jesus answered and said unto him if a man love me he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. And the word which he hear is not mine, but the father's which sent me. Here, Jesus, our brother, declaring, reminding us of the commandments that were sent to him. And he says to us, us that he's here offering his love to So that we can receive the love of the Father. He says, if you love me, then you will keep my commandments. Commandments that are set forth. As he said, love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, mind, body, soul, and thy strength. And the next is to love your brothers. Jesus, the God of love, says, receive love. And because of that love, it will cause us to obey. It's the same love that he received that caused him to obey. And he says, if you love me and obey my commandments, then me and my Father will come to you. We will receive the love of the Father. We will abode with you. Aboding meaning by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Without his Holy Spirit, we will not be able to recognize Jesus, the Son of God, for who he is. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot love. Man does not know how to love of his own. We need the love of the Father. Jesus Christ, our brother, knew his commission Father sent him, born of the Virgin Mary. The Father sent him with a commission. He knew exactly what he needed to do. He went about to do the Father's work. He says, I'm about my Father's business. He went into the synagogue to preach. He faced the torture. How do we know all of this? Because It was a heavy burden for him. Imagine you and I being given birth, raised up to know that our life is only worth one thing, to die. That's it. Every night you go to bed, You know that. You're born to die. Every morning you wake up, you are born to die. Just imagine the weight of that. I'm sure many of us would probably go mad. And not wanting to live, thinking that, why should we live when we're going to die? So, kill me now. Put me out of my misery. But no, Jesus, no, he didn't do that. But that doesn't mean that it was easy for him, even though he he knew his end. We see Jesus struggle just like we struggle. The love of the Father, though, one. 
just like the love of the Father will always won us over. Because we aim to please the Father, just as Jesus aimed to please the Father. And through Jesus Christ and his love, we are loving Jesus and loving the Father, pleasing Jesus and pleasing the Father. I know many religions out there say, you don't need to go through Jesus. But it's not true. They pray only to Jehovah God. In the Old Testament, it was just Jehovah God. Jesus was not revealed to them yet. The Jews don't know Jesus yet. They did not accept him. They refused. They only believed in God the Father. That's it. They refused to know God the Son. But we do. And that is such an honor. And that's why we are here today. Because many of us have been bound, lost, locked up. Just like the Jews that don't know the revelation of the Son. We don't know the revelation of the Father. But tonight, we will come to understand the love of the Father that met Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. The Garden of the Oil Press. Let's look at Matthew chapter 26. And we're going to read from verse 36 to 46. And the Word of God reads, Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane. And saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here, while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. And he went a little farther, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the fleshy weak is weak. He went, ag- he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came, found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray us. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus, the Son of God, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he took with him Peter, James, and John, carrying that heavy burden, heavy burden knowing that he had to pay with his life, that he was being made to drink from the cup of wrath, that he... hmm, Oh, God. As I am reading this, my spirit is very heavy. A brother to give his life. Do we 
understand what it means to be firstborn son. The burden that the firstborn carries. The firstborn, the one that opens the matrix, the one that opens the womb, the one that's consecrated unto God, the one that, oh God, like my firstborn son. I was a young mother, didn't know anything. The one that bore all my mistakes. The one that every one coming after looks to. The one that has to forge the way. The one that had to go make it. To show all the others coming after. The burden of the firstborn. But Jesus wasn't just making the way. He became the way. He became the sacrifice. The blood of bulls and goats was not worthy anymore. The blood of bull and goats did not wash away the sin of the Garden of Eden. An animal was slaughtered in the garden and badger skin was put on Adam to hide the nakedness that sin exposed. But it was not enough then. We, the priesthood, offered up sacrifice, annual sacrifices. Still was not enough then. God the Father knew it required the sacrifice of the firstborn son. He knew that reconciliation and the family being brought back together required human blood required a spiritual blood to be shed. And so God the Father, treasuring his creation that he formed from the dust in the garden, that he breathed himself in, said, I must, in my agape love and in my storge love, must come down here. And he wrestled with himself. He wrestled with himself. He brought Peter, James, and John. They represented you and I there with the Christ. But just imagine you going to help someone to do something, help someone to paint their house. And they just fall asleep on you. And you end up doing all the painting yourself. Jesus brought Peter, James, and John to tarry with him, to agonize with him, to be in prayer with him. But, as he said, the spirit willing, but the flesh weak. The flesh, the sinful flesh, could not tarry and so that destroys the lie to say that Jesus Christ was sin in the body. No, that was not so. Because if he was sin, he could not bear the way to say, nevertheless, not my will. It was his body was holy and it was spirit. There was no unclean in him. He was just the atonement for sin. He was not sin on the earth. He walked in the purity and the fullness. He committed no sin. He was not sinful flesh, says the Father. Remember, my brothers and sisters, he was holiness on this earth. We could not tarry. We could not watch. Not even one hour. He says to us in this passage, is it of no worth that after what I'm going to agonize through that we will not be grateful? We thank God for mercy and grace. 
thank God for mercy and grace because Jesus decided to still be obedient in his love for the Father, still be disobedient, even though we were not worthy of the sacrifice, even though we were not worthy to say, I will drink of the cup. Not my will. And he says, if it may not pass, because I must let it be done, even though they are not worthy. Let it be done because the Father requires it. And that's why he says, sleep on. It is not your weight to carry. You rest while I go and do what needs to be done. You rest. Because my time has come. The fulfillment of why I was born is come. Behold, I must be betrayed. And he that has betrayed me cometh now. Sinners, sinners, we, the ones he was dying for, are going to be the ones that kill him. He just think about it. We, the ones that he is going to the cross for, are the ones that are going to kill him. Yes. Let's look real quickly. Mark 14, verse 48 to 53. And it says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, are you come out as against a thief with swords and with stays to take me? I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and you took me not. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. And they all forsook him and fled. And there followed him a certain young man, having a linen cloth cast about his naked body. And the young men laid hold on him. And he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. And they led Jesus away to the high priest. And with him were assembled all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes. Jesus taken to the cross to be crucified by sinners and abandoned. Oh my God. Abandoned. We know all the others that were with him fled. We heard nothing about Peter and James and John. Peter rose up and struck one of the gods, cut off his ears, and the Lord says to him, they that live by the sword will die by the sword. Then Peter disappears. We see later, Peter denying him three times. All that Christ was doing was for us. Not only did we abandon him in his agony, but we abandoned him when they came to take him. We fled. Even the man fled out of his own clothing, naked. And that represented the nakedness of sin exposed. As the law says, that young man represented all the sin of man exposed because he was no longer covered up anymore. Christ exposed all the sin and he was going to die for us. Just imagine now, after Peter even denied him three times, just imagine false witness after false witness lined up to testify against you and nobody to say he speaks the truth. Because we were all blind. Nobody willing to stand up to be crucified alone, even though Peter said, even to the death Will I go with you? And when they came to grab Jesus, Peter didn't go to the death with him. No. Who went to the death with Jesus? Let's turn quickly. Mark 15, verses 25 to 39. And it was the third hour. And they crucified him. And the superscription of his accusation was written over. The king 
of the Jews. And with him, they crucify two thieves, the one on his right hand and the other on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And they that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself and come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests mocking said among themselves with the scribes, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. Let Christ the King of Israel descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. <laughs> and they that were crucified with him reviled him. And when the six hours come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabatani, which is being interpreted, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of them that stood by when they heard it said, Behold, he calleth Elias. And one ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink, saying, let alone. Let us see whether Elias will come to take him down. And Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. And the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And when the centurion which stood over against him saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. All this time, Jesus said, I'm the Son of God. They said it was blasphemy. They nailed him to the cross with two thieves. None of his disciples were there. Why? It was not their cross to bear. It was not their destiny. It was his destiny. On his left and on his right were two thieves. A thief. To represent the thief that betrayed him. To represent the devil himself who is the thief. Seeking to steal our souls. Seeking to steal our purpose. Seeking to steal our destiny. The thief. The liar, the one that puts holes in the money bag, the Judas that is still in the earth today, roaming about like a lion, seeking whom to devour. The two thieves represented the theft of life from mankind. But Jesus Christ in the midst to say, I'm the door. I'm the midst of all of the devil's plan to destroy his plan. Yes, I'm in the midst of it. So don't think that the devil wins. I won on Calvary. I'm still winning in the earth. I will cast the thief into the lake of fire. He will be bound. But until then, Receive the love of my Son to receive the love of the Father. It was in that moment that the temple veil was rent from top to bottom. Why? Because God was destroying the system of religion. And he was building a new foundation, sealed in blood. Yes, rendered from top to bottom, because the veil over mankind's eyes would be no more. Truly, we will behold his face. Hallelujah. Truly, we will behold the face of God for a generation. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
because of the love of the Father. The Son went to the cross, bore the agony, bore, hallelujah, Jesus, the ridicule, hallelujah, when they stripped him and they put on him a scarlet robe, when they plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head and put a reed in his hand in mockery as a scepter, and when they bowed their knees and placated themselves before him to mock him and to say, Hail, King of the Jews, when they spat in his face, God, Jesus, and when they smut him in the head, hallelujah, Jesus, and they mocked him and ridiculed him and ripped the robe off of him and paraded him to be nailed to the cross. Yes, he who bore the lash for us, because by his stripes, by his wounds are we healed. That is the love of the Son for us. The love of the brother, our brother, that we can call in his name and say by his stripes because he bore the stripes for us. Brother had to do what the brother had to do in obedience to the father. That we will be no longer blind, but that the father would be revealed to us, that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, will be revealed to us, and we will declare by revelation, as Peter declared by revelation, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus would say, as he said to Peter, Say to us, you would not be able to say that. You would not be able to say those words unless the Father had revealed it unto you. Unless the Father had revealed the Son unto us, we would not be able to say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. We would not be able to say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we will not be able to receive the love of the Father. And with that, we will take a quick break. And I encourage us to meditate on the Word as we come back in to see the love of the Father revealed in our lives. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. The way you father us, Lord. As the songwriter said, there is no me without you. You have framed us and shaped us in a special way for you, Lord. God, that you hold us in such value and esteem, such honor that you crowned us with your glory and your honor. That Jesus, as he hung on the cross, he cried out, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabatani. Eloi, Eloi, lama sabatani. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And as the Father is revealing to me now, through his Son and his Holy Spirit, is that at that moment when Jesus cried, My God, my God, because it was the Father Oh God. See, God, the Almighty God, had to step out of the way. God, the Creator, had to step out of the way because God, the Father, was going to be revealed. So when he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because God, the Father, had to turn away because it was 
God, God, Jehovah God had to turn away. But God the Father was looking there on the sun and said, you've got to make that sacrifice. God the Father said, it is necessary for you to make that sacrifice. So God, Jehovah God, Elohim the Creator, where it says in Genesis 1.1, it says, in the beginning, God. It was that God. The God of the Old Testament that was in the garden, he had to turn away so that God the Father could be revealed to us. Because when Jesus died, he says, truly, he's the son of God. That's when sonship and fatherhood was established. Hallelujah. Because out of the mouth of a man says, truly, this was the Son of God. That was the first revelation of sonship. The first revelation that the Father existed. That is the revelation he wants us to have tonight. It is God the Father. It is because of his love for us. Well, we are listening to the show tonight. And he says to remind us how through the years he's been trying to show us his love to understand. I want us to go to the book of Luke chapter 15 and we're going to read about a familiar story the story of the prodigal but I'm going to speak with you as the Lord has brought to my lips to my heart, to my spirit and has conceived my soul a message hidden it reads and he said A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, And he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would have fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me, O Jesus, make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, His father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found. And they began to be merry. When the Lord shared this with me, I started to ponder the message of the prodigal son. And then he brought the revelation. He said, the young son is you, my children. 
It is you and I running from God the Father, running away from the safety and provision of Father God, running into the arms of the world, joining ourselves to people who use us, abuse us, you and I living a life of sin and wantonness, wasting the blessings, squandering our lives away, selling ourselves out to the enemy for pleasure. The drug addict, the alcoholic, the ones addicted to porn, the murderers just like to kill, child abuser, wife abuser, the cheater, the thief, the liar. Selling ourselves out for pleasure, fornicator, these pleasures that are temporary fix, drug only lasts for so long, the alcohol will wear off. And we end up destitute. We become vagabonds, orphans, find ourselves alone, hungry, starving, wanting to do anything to survive. So we become unclean. This young son, us, in the pig pen, of sin tangled with sorcery and witchcraft tangled drinking from the cup of demons and wanting to drink from the cup of the Lord want to go the way of the Lord but still play with the fire of devils You and I, like the prodigal son, the young one, he said the younger, demanding his inheritance before time. Yes, do we understand when we're out there, we are demanding our inheritance before time? Demanding judgment before time. What if we die out there? We would have destroyed our destiny. Out there, running with the devils, filling our bellies with unclean food, not realizing that out there, judgment the hand of God will still find us. The Father allowing us to go on because he didn't make puppets. He gave us free will. And his desire is that we choose him. So he waits that one day we will come to our senses. Wake up out of the demonic coma and just want to get out. Get out of doing drugs. Get out of selling drugs. Get up. Get out of pornography. Get out of watching it. Get out of even being in the movies our own selves. Get out of warning to, to to cheat on the husband, cheat on the wife. Get out, out of the bed of adultery. Get out of the fornicating bed. Get out of being the other woman, the concubine. Get out, out of that filth. One day realizing, you know, I'm better than this. Why have I stooped myself to be abused like this? Why do I let him beat on me and then tell me that he loves me? Why does he, I I allow him to treat me like a dog? 
kick me like a doormat, wipe his muddy shoe on me. Why? I'm better than this. I'm somebody. I'm somebody. Why should I just let them tell me I'm not going to be about anything? I can go to school. I can be somebody. I can learn. I have a brain. Why do I need to turn to heroin and crack and meth? Be stupid. Why do I need a John to sell me to every Tom, Dick, and Harry? Why do I need to sleep with all these men? Why? Yes. The love of the Father would rend that veil from top to bottom. David says, where can I turn from you? Where, Lord? If I make my bed in hell, you find me. Even if I soar on the wings of an eagle, into the heavens you find me. Where can we run from the love of God? Where? Oh, God. When we realize and come to the understanding of who he is and understand his love, his desire to remove the blindness, it was his love that touched Saul of Tarsus when he shined the light on him to reveal his spiritual blindness because he had eyes but was not seeing. If he did, he would not be killing us. So scales came on his eyes to show him, to put him in the darkness, to reveal to him the true darkness that he was in without knowing it. And then Ananias was sent to lay hands on his eyes that he could see to understand that you are one of us. We are your brother. So too does the love of God searches us out. That even in our rebellion, the wanting to get away from God, not wanting to serve him, not wanting to receive the love of the Father, it still hunts us down. It hunts us down in that person that meets us in the club and say, aren't you churchgoer? What are you doing here? It's that love that meets us in the bar that said, you know you should have been here. Go home. Go home. You don't need to drink. Go home. Read your Bible. It is that same love that finds us in the workplace, in the marketplace to say, didn't God call you to be his missionary? And why are you tarrying here? It is that same love that will cause us hmm, to leave jobs. Yes, high paying jobs. And go to do the work, to be the will of our Father. Yes, I started to ponder even more this passage. The young son thought in himself that he was going to go to the father and he was going to say, I've sinned against heaven and before you. But the Bible says, when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. And the Lord started to stir in me. I'm always looking for you to come home. Before the prodigal son reached the doorstep, 
Papa ran to him. And he says that he fell on the son's neck. Shouldn't it be the other way? The son falling on the father's neck. <laughs> and kissed him. That kiss was a kiss of restoration. My brothers and sisters. The love of the father revealed. The prodigal son coming home. You and I coming home to receive, to accept the love that we had rejected, that we were blinded from, that we ran away from because the world said it didn't exist. Because God is so far away, he is just God. He's a punisher. If you break any of his commandments, you have hell to pay. You're going to hell. Oh, God, didn't the devil have a field way? All we preached was hail and brimstone. We forgot about grace of God. Oh, God, we forgot about love from John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave. We forget about the gift. We forgot about the sacrifice that hung on Calvary. We forgot about the blood that flowed. Hallelujah, Jesus. We forgot, hallelujah, that the tomb was empty. Oh, God. So we don't need to believe the lie of the enemy anymore. That said the Father, oh, God Almighty Jesus, that we're going to turn God into a carnal man. No, 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 my brothers and sisters. That is a lie. He says, ah, oh, Kosa. He says, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Draw me near. Nearer, 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 blessed Lord. He says, I'm drawing close. I want to be close to you. Just to be close to you is the desire of the Father. Oh God, just to be close to you, to touch you. That when you cry to console you, he sent his Holy Spirit, the Comforter. The Father wants to be near. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh God, and that's why Jesus Christ knew the importance. He said, do not touch me. I'm not, oh God, gone unto my Father yet. Don't touch me. Don't mess up the plan. Don't mess up my destiny. If you touch me, you're going to touch me with unclean hands hands. I must present myself before my father, pure and untouched, that he realize and understand and know I have obeyed because I love you, Father. Oh, God, see, I've accomplished it. Indeed, it is finished. Now, my brothers and my sisters can be reconciled back unto you. Now they can come home because I came and I bore it. Oh, God, Daddy, I did it for you because I love you so much. See the nail, nail print. Oh God, oh God. You see, when when Jesus appeared unto Thomas, oh God Almighty Jesus, it was a revelation, a proof to say, oh God, hallelujah. Don't, no, no wondering. There wouldn't be any wondering because when he appeared unto the others, nobody wanted to check the package to see if it was Jesus Jesus, the Son of God, that had risen. You see, Thomas was not the doubter. We keep, we misunderstand scripture sometimes. We only see things one way sometimes. You see, Thomas was the checker. That, hallelujah. Oh God, what I seem to know is it the Christ. That's why the Bible says, try every spirit to see if it's of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. It says, many have gone out there, false prophets amongst us. You see, Thomas says, let me see. Jesus says, here, here's my hand. Here's the wound in my side. It indeed is me, Thomas. Yes, they did all this. Here's the proof. Here's the proof, but don't touch. Love. Love the Father. With the love of the Son. That when the father saw the son coming home, oh, when 
God the Father saw God the Son come home. There was a celebration in heaven. Just as there was a celebration for the prodigal son. You see, immediately, the father called them to bring the robe, the best robe, put on the ring and shoes. You know what the robe represents? Dominion. Royalty. Yes, a great high priest. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. The ring. A king needs the ring to seal the deal. Authority. In the shoes. The shoes. Peace. He is counselor, mighty God, prince of peace, the everlasting one, the omnipotent one, omniscient, ancient of days. The risen one, the resurrection, the truth, the life, lover of our souls, governor, bishop, king of kings, lord of lords, healer. Redeemer, provider, judge, my brothers and sisters, Christ's destiny was wrapped up in ours. Oh, God, that it is that, his destiny was wrapped up in ours. We need to give our brother the esteem. The Bible says, give honor where honor is due. We must give him thanks for what he, he did. Yes. Yes. Mm. We must be like the thief. That said, oh God, to let him be with him. Yes, to accept, to receive the love of the Father. We don't want to be like the one on the, on the left that was cursed to hell and damnation, to reject the love of the Father. Oh God, oh God, yes, Christ's destiny wrapped up in ours. You see, Christ had to ascend so the Comforter could come. The Comforter who is the revelator of the truth, of the word, that brings the word of God to memory. Hmm. Yes, Father still active in the world, still bestowing his love, his mercy and grace. Oh God, because Jesus Christ represented the mercy and the grace of God the Father upon us. Oh God, I say to you because because of us, because of the Father's love for us, that God the Son was born to die. He accepted his purpose. He accepted his destiny. 
And our Father in heaven rewarded him the crown and authority. Hallelujah. When we accept him, the Son, we are also accepting him, the Father. When we accept the love of the Son, we're accepting also the love of the Father. And there is a prize. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. There's a prize for us that's stored. Oh God, for us to come and share. Remember, we are seated with him in heavenly places. My brothers and sisters, we are royalty. We too will receive the robe of identity, of lineage. We will receive our ring of dominion and authority. And we will be welcomed in peace. He said, my peace, I give unto you. <laughs> That's why he says, put on the shoes with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That you can go and tell all men about me. About the Father and his love for mankind. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. While he hung on the cross, forsaken, had the power and the dominion to call down a thousand angels, ten thousand, a million. didn't do anything. He cried out, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabatani. To say, Father, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, that all men will know how much you love them and all of heaven will know how much you love mankind. It was not only a revelation for us, but for heaven, that they will understand that it was God's self that was breathing to us. We were created in his image and his likeness. It's his DNA and his blood. He's in our marrow. We've just been turned aside. We're blind. But he says, surely they can see again. Surely they will come to their senses and realize I'm not the bad guy. I have nothing but love. I love my children. I just want them to love me back. I give you my love even when you didn't love me. Even when you rejected me. Even when you didn't want to talk about me. Even when you don't even want to recognize me. Even when you take my word and set it on fire. Even when you cursed me. 
I still loved you. Tonight, my brothers and sisters, God has spoken. God has spoken. The love of the Father makes everything clear. The love of the Father will rend the veil of blindness from top to bottom that we will surely see because now we will understand why we know about the what what Christ did but do we understand truly the why we didn't but now we do because we know where it all began in the garden, when he made man in his own image, that even when the devil came to destroy it, he covered our nakedness. And though we were no longer in Eden, he made it possible to create an Eden in us. Just as we are the church, we also are his Eden, where his Holy Spirit will move and mist will rise up and water the garden, that we will have time with him in the cool of the day. The scripture says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. To taste of that love, that unrequited love that the Father has for us. Just like that well-coveted job you want, but you just have to accept it. And it is yours. You just have to accept and believe on the Son. Believe on the Son. Accept the love of Christ. Understand the why. Why he did it. Why he willingly laid it down. That he could willingly take it up again. Because the Father gave him the power to lay it down. And the power to take it up again. We can endure like Job endured and get to the end to say, the Lord give it, the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We will not curse him. We will love him even when the enemy comes and tax our wealth and our finances. When he comes and attacks our bodies, we will continue to glorify God. We will be like Paul and Silas in the prison with guards all around and still find time to offer up prayer and praise. Oh, that the Father was moved with compassion. That the very jail shook. Yes, and shook so violently that an earthquake. <laughs> there was an earthquake. Tonight, let the heaven and the earth shake with that earthquake of our love, of our praise, of thankfulness to God, our Father. We thank you, Abba, that you did all this for 
us. All this for us. You did not let us remain condemned to hell and eternal damnation. You proved your way. You said you'll make a way of escape. Jesus, the way, the open door to turn back, to return and go home back home, no longer afraid, no longer feeling like it's too many rules and regulations, but to understand why we have to live according to your commandments. It is safety. It provides comfort. It is our weapon against the enemy when he tries to steal. It is protection. Now we understand fully when you said, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. When you speak unto us, I will lift my eyes unto the hills from whence come my help. When you speak unto us, lest the Lord build a house, they that build it labor in vain. Yes, when you say, certainly the Lord God will do nothing, but he reveals his secrets to his servants, his prophets. When you say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want When you say, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the seat of scorners. When you say, delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. When he says, in all thy ways to acknowledge him. When he says, the steps for good men are ordered by the Lord. When you say the prayer for righteous men, avail it much. When you say, touch not my anointed. When you say the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. When you say, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. When you say, all power that was given unto me have I given unto you, that you shall drink poison not do you any harm. We shall take up serpents. Oh God, only the Father looking after his children, will go to such length as to sacrifice himself. Yes. Sacrifice himself so that his children will have life. And not just any life but abundant life. And that's why you said, Lord, before you were in the belly, I knew thee. You knew us before we even knew you. You had a love for us before we even knew love. You showed us love before we even knew to accept it. But tonight, Lord, tonight, Abba, Father, you've adopted us all. We are grateful. We are thankful. That 
that you love us so. That you love us so. You refuse to share us with anyone else. You say, I can defend my children. I can take care of them. I am their father. They may not know it, but I am their father. The love that I have for them is real. It is not contaminated. It is not defiled. It is not impure. It is selfless. I love them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your obedience to come to live in us, to stir the fire of love within us that we will want to draw near and nearer to our Father. Father, tonight, we promise you we will never leave you. We promise you that we will obey you because your words are life. Your words are sustenance. Your words are meat. In your presence is where we belong. This world is not our own. So, Lord, tonight, we give ourselves to you. I give myself away. Hallelujah. I give myself away so you can use me I give myself away like Jesus I give myself away so you can use me here I am here I stand Lord I like is in your hands all my dreams all my plans Lord I place them in your hands I give myself away I give myself away so you can use me, Abba Father, Abba Father, Abba Father, I belong to you. I belong to you. You've opened my eyes so I can see. You've opened my ears that I can hear. You've given me a heart to love you, Abba Father. Abba Father, Abba Father, oh, hallelujah Jesus, and the Spirit of the Lord says to us tonight, it is well, it is well with your souls, it says it is well, it is well. Don't you worry, don't you fret, your Father in heaven remains, 
forever and a day giving his love to you this is the holy spirit speaking hallelujah jesus all the love that he kept he bestows now on to you so reach out and touch his hand Reach out and draw near to the Father's love, to the Father's love, as He pours it out, pours it out unto you. Let him fill you up. Let him fill you up with the love that cannot be contained, that cannot be pressed, that cannot be denied. Because tonight, oh God, you've opened up our eyes to see. Hallelujah, Jesus. Love. Love of the Father that stirs our hearts, that quickens our spirit because now we know the rest of the matter, the rest of the story. We know how it ends because we can touch that love. We can taste it. We can feel it like Thomas. It is revealed. So my brothers and sisters, In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of his precious Holy Spirit that has uh, abided with us this night. And as we take him with us, his fullness, I say to us all, go, go, proclaim it. Declare it. Tell others about it. Show them what the Father says. What he has done in our lives. Yes, they understand the depth, the height, the length, the breadth of his love. Nothing can separate us from no devil, no demons, no fiery trial, no tribulation, Mm -mm. no infirmity, no loss. No. No. We will say, it is finished in us. Because the love of the Father has been revealed. Let it be finished in you. To the love of the Father be revealed in you. So I say to us all. Until. The next series. Relove. The husband man. The love of the husband man. Until the next continuation of our real love series, the love of the husband man, as God reveals himself to us, his bride. May the word of God quicken in your spirit and in our souls this night. May it forever be written on the frontlets of our eyes. We will not forget it. But may the Holy Spirit bring it forever to our remembrance how he loves us 
Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves. Because he is jealous for me. Love's like the hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the wind in ways of his mercy. Yes. When all of a sudden I am unaware of his questions eclipsed by glory and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great is your love for me. And oh, how he loves us so. Oh, how he loves us. How he loves us so. Don't forget. Shalom, shalom. God bless you all. Amen.